good afternoon or good morning when you see this on um, on Monday. Uh, my name's uh, Michelle Emanuel. I'm stepping in again and helping out Mr. Terry Paul, which is a pleasure. Um, we're here at Shiloh on um, Pentecostal Holiness Church on 2271 um, Ultra Mill Road. Um, I'm going to bring you the message for Monday today, and we're glad that you tune in today. Um, call, dial a friend, share it on Facebook, you know, and let them get this word that we're, we're going to be talking about today. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about reconciliation today, and we're going to talk about uh, just briefly, you know, what happens after reconciliation with God. So first of all, let's uh, say a little prayer, and then we're going to go forward, okay? Father God, as we come before you today in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the great love that you've loved us with. Thank you for the sacrifice, God, that you've made in the way that you've made for mankind. Thank you for that today. Lord God, we pray and ask you to be in the midst of everything that's been done today. Father God, I pray and ask your spirit, Lord, to lead us and guide us and to help us through this small lesson today. Thank you for your word, Father. All these things we pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you bless everyone that's listening today, Lord God. We pray that this word will come, Father God, and build itself within our heart and fall on good ground once again, Lord, and where we can grow thereby. For this we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about sin. I want to talk about how everyone, the Word of God tells us that we were all conceived in sin and we all come short of the glory of God. And, you know, I, I hear different stories from different folks, you know, I've done too much or, um, or, or you know, I once was saved, you know, and I backslid, you know, uh, the Lord, there's no way that the Lord will take me back or, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't love me or he, or he won't look at me the same way. Listen, the Lord loves you. The sacrifice that he made was great for you. Not only you, me, and all of mankind. God's not going to retract his word. We had talked before um, and had mentioned before in some of these Monday messages that God honors his word above his name. So let's take a look. You know, we're at God's word. We're not perfect. We know that we're not perfect. Look, when Jesus came, he came to die for you. He knew that you were in sin. My preacher mentioned something, uh, or my pastor mentioned something last week. God hasn't changed his mind about how he feels about you. His love for you, his caring for you, he has not changed. Amen. If you've walked away from the Lord, he is right where you left him at. And all you're just one step away. Those of you that are in sin, you know, or maybe not exactly where you need to be in the Lord, you're just one step away from God. All it takes is having that conversation with him and being honest. Now, I, I will say this about the Lord. Whether you're right or wrong on something, being honest shows repentance. Being honest shows that you're willing to turn away from whatever it is that you're doing. Okay, so let's take a look at, you know, what the Lord has in his word for us today. Uh, Romans uh, 3 and 23, which is probably a very familiar passage to you. So let's take a look at it. Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned. What is he talking about all? When we think about the word all, all means everything. It includes everything. He said for all. All have sinned. And he's directing all in the sense of people. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that means me, you, you know, I think about pastors. I think about people that are in ministry, maybe singing ministries, those who um, who are evangelists, those who maybe um, do international ministries. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes all of us. Amen. Present all men placed into all of us, all placed in the same category. So let me say men and women, boy and girl, children, we all are in the same category and we all have come short. Amen. And we all have sinned. 
if we go on with that scripture in verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus is the one who's our mediator. Amen. He's the one that has come to reconcile us. So now, to reconcile us. So now that we all have sinned, we all know that we have come short of the glory of God. Then how are we going to get back to God? How are we going to make that thing right? How are we going to um, get us back in right standing with God? Amen. Through Jesus Christ and all of his work that he had done on the cross reconciles us back to the Father. Amen. So let's take a look at verse 24. Okay. Listen to this. Being justified freely by his grace. Think about the word. Now that baffles me. Think about the word justified. We are justified freely. There's no cost to it. It doesn't cost us the thing, but our trust and our faith and our acceptance of him in our lives didn't cost us the Jesus paid the price, all of the price for everything, for every single sin that's that's been committed or that will ever be committed. Once again, listen to this. Being justified. Justified means made right. Justified means, um, I look at it as coming to a whole. Amen. Being justified. It ain't nothing that we earn. Jesus Christ done it all for us. Justified, justified freely by his grace that was made possible through the cross. Amen. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. What Jesus carried out on that cross for you and I. He shed his blood on Calvary's, at Calvary's cross for us. Not only me, but every single person. Amen. And I believe that probably one drop could have saved. That's just how powerful God is. His son, just one drop could have saved the whole world, but he didn't do that. Amen. And people said, well, you know, uh, he shed it all of his blood. Yes, he did. Well, people, I heard some people say that he spilled his blood. Now, to spill something is an accident to me. When I look at it, if I spill something, it's an accident. It's not nothing that I've done on purpose. God did not send his son to spill his blood out for us. He sent his son to shed his blood for us. Amen. And he shed it all of his blood for us to save us, to cleanse us from our sins. He was willing to do all of that. Now, were we worthy of that? No. And you know what? He come doing that sin was in the world. He knew that, but he still done it anyway. Amen. What a wonderful God that we have here this morning. Amen. So let's take a look. Now, we already know that the word of God tells us that all have sinned and come short, short of the glory of God. So let me just, and, 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 and sin can be in any form. The scriptures just says this, to do right, to know to do right, and doeth it not, to him or her, it is a sin. I know sometimes we look at stuff, um, if you're a drug addict, if you're an alcoholic, um, if you are um, an adulteress, um, if, you, if you lie, or um, if you steal, um, it doesn't matter what it is that you do. Even a little white lie doesn't, people said that ain't such things a little white lie, but a lie is a lie, amen. All we have to do is come truthful and be honest and come to God and repent and turn away from those things, and God will save us and deliver us and forgive us out of those sins and those situations, amen. For all have sinned, all of us said so we're justified freely by his grace. You know what that tells me too? It doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what no one says. Jesus says, look, I have justified you. I have done it freely. I have forgiven you by my grace. Amen. I look at it like this. God is not sitting. The Lord is not sitting up there pointing his finger at us when he forgives us our sins. You know, pointing your finger, look, he's not sitting there thinking about that. Then why should I? Why should I? I've repented from it. I turn away from it. Amen. And walk the other way. And ask the Lord to give me the strength and to comfort me and to help me. Amen. To keep on that right track. Amen. If you fall, get up. If you make a mistake, just get up. The Lord will forgive you. Amen. And he'll tell you 
walk in faith. I, I, matter of fact, I had a situation, and uh, the Lord saved me back in um, 1998. And um, I'm sorry, 1997. That's been a good while back. But uh, I had, I was a, a new Christian. I was a babe in Christ. And I had made a mistake. Um, I actually said something I shouldn't have said. And, uh, and, that, and of course, conviction came, yes. And immediately I went to my bedroom. I fell on my knees. I said, Lord, please forgive me. Um, and I, was, I felt like I was agonizing with God. God, forgive me. I, I didn't mean to do this. I, you know, please forgive. It, it, I mean, I didn't do it on purpose. Lord, please forgive me. And I think I was more worried about it than he is. And sometimes we have a problem forgiving ourselves. When the Lord has already forgiven us once we ask. Amen. The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He says, now walk in faith. You know what he mean? I, I, now walk in faith. You've prayed. I've forgiven you. Now you move on. Move on and go forward. Amen. And I'm thankful for that today. I know none of us is perfect. Amen. But now we're not walking around practicing sin either. Okay. We're doing the best that we can with the knowledge that we had every single day to serve Jesus. You know, and and serve him in spirit and serve him in truth. Um, let's take a look at um when we're talking about reconciliation, we're talking about salvation, we're talking about how Jesus has made um that bridge for us. So what happens, you know, once the Lord saves us, you know, what are some of the things you know that we need to be doing or or what is the next step in our walk? Okay. So let's take a look at Romans, um, excuse me, let's take a look at Second Corinthians um chapter five. Verse 17, it says, therefore, listen to this, therefore, if any man be in Christ, that means that you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, the spirit of the Lord have come in and forgiven you, cleansed you, and now the spirit of the Lord is, is dwelling with, within you. He is a, or she is, either one, is a new creature. New creature. God has, and, and that's the word I keep hearing, is new, new, new. You are a new creature. You're not the person that you used to be. When you, when a, someone looks at you on the outside, and, and I guess we'll just take and use me, you know, as an example, um, I, I still have curly hair. I'm still Native American. I'm still a female. I'm still uh, 55 years old. I still work at the same place that I work at. You know, I still have the same family members. So when you look on the outside of me and you see me, you still see Michelle. That's what you see. That's what the naked eyes see. But on the inside is where that new creature is created. On the inside is what he's talking about that becomes new. I think about Nicodemus when they, they said, Nicodemus, you know, you, you, you must be born again in order to, to enter into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus is like, you know, what do you mean? You know, he was kind of uh, had questions. And I, don't, I wouldn't say confused. Maybe he just didn't quite understand it. But the Lord is talking about the spirit of the Lord being born new in the spirit, not in the flesh. You cannot get back into your mother's womb and be reborn. We're talking about a spiritual birth once we come to Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen. So it's therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. The place you used to go, passed away. The sins that you know, all of that stuff is passed away. You've been given a new day. You've been given a new life. You have been created new on the inside. Amen. And it says, now behold, all things are new. Now, I will say this. I remember the day. It was back in March, like I said, in, in um, 1997, 98. I can't even remember what I said. That was one of those years that the Lord saved me. And like I said, it's been quite a while. Um, I was at home. I was by myself. And the Lord had already been dealing with me. He'd been um, putting me in a conviction, strong conviction and I was trying to run and uh, it just got to a point where um, I couldn't run anymore and I remember being in my living room throwing my hands up in surrender and uh, the power of the Holy Ghost I'm telling you it said shh, shh, and, and rested itself in that living room and I started praying asking the Lord you know repenting asking him the Lord to forgive me and uh, help me live a better life come in and forgive me of my sins and it was late at night, midnight hour, 
um, and after I had uh, repented, the Lord saved me, and I just, you know, I went to bed. I got up the next morning. The first thing I noticed is like, why does it sound like those birds are so loud that are chirping outside? They sound like they were right in my ear, and I was actually getting ready for work that morning. And then I walk out, I got ready, and I went outside. Now, literally, when the word, for me, and I know everybody's experiences are different, it says, behold, all things are become new. When I walked outside and I shut the door, I locked the door, and I looked up, and I almost fell to my knees. It was, the grass was greener, the trees were green. They were bigger. Air, just that spirit of the Lord had came and delivered me, forgive me, lived within me, and everything in my life was new. I had a new life. Amen. My past was washed away. Amen. If you're saved today, do not let the enemy trick you. Your past has been washed away. Amen. You look forward and you keep walking forward with the Lord. If you're here today and you're watching me today and you're not saved, hey, God has made a way for you through his son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile you back to the Lord, to give you that new life. Amen. To create and, and give you, uh, to be a new creature on the inside. Everything in newness. Amen. So it says once again, once again, all things are of God. Amen. All things of, of, are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. God had to have a lamb and his name was Jesus Christ to reconcile man back to him. Man had wandered away so far away from God. But see, God, from the very beginning, he knew. From the very, very beginning, he had an answer, and his answer was Jesus Christ. Amen? And it says, all things are of God, verse 18, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And it goes on to say, um, verse 19, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Amen. And we're part of that. We've been reconciled to God if you belong to the Lord and you're saved today. You've been reconciled back to the Father through the grace and, and the mercy and through the works of the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for that today. Amen. If you're lost and you're undone, the Lord is there for you. Amen. He is there for you. Amen. He will not leave you. That's the one thing I like about him. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Amen. He knows right where you're at. If you're not where you should be, hey, you're just a prayer away. You're just a prayer away today. Amen. So let's take a look at Colossians 3 and 10. I hear a lot of the, the, the new babes when they first say, you know, the, the word of God tells us, um, for those of you that are um, the Lord has uh, recently saved and reconciled back to the Father, that he wants you to drink like babe. You know, you think about a baby. A, a baby drinks milk. And, you know, really a baby can't do a whole lot on its own. So now you've got this new life, okay? When we talk about milk, we're talking about the sincere milk of the Word of God. You need to start learning about Christ. You need to start learning about the things that he's done for you. Matter of fact, you need to start learning the identity of who you are in Christ Jesus because you're going to be challenged. The enemy is going to come, and he's going to come in different forms, and he's going to challenge you on your reconciliation through salvation, through Jesus Christ back to the Father. He's going to do that. But you've got the Word of God to stand on. And God wants you to grow and, and feed off the sincere milk of the word, which I call uh, a baby milk. Okay, so let's take a look at Colossians um, 3 and verse 10, and this will be the last scripture that we do today. Chapter 3, verse 10. It says, And having put on the new man, here we go with that word again, new, having put on the new man, you're a new creature created in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new to you. And have put on the new man. How do you put on the new man? Right here. Right here. This is how you put on the new man. That's how you keep that new man, that inner man that you just received. That's how you keep it strong. 
is through the word of God. Amen. Studying. The Bible tells us to study the word of God. And, and I think it said the book of Timothy said rightly dividing the word of God. Amen. So you will know the truth. Amen. And the spirit that lives in you cannot, I say he cannot bring up something that you don't put in. You got to put in the word of God, amen, and grow thereby. Of course, we know prayer is our first dialogue. We, talk, we talked about that. That's our dialect, you know, and our, uh, into our conversation with the Lord and that communication with him, um, opening ourselves up with the spirit can minister to us when we are reading and studying the word of God. So that's how we do it. And then not only do we read the word of God, we study the word of God, we divide the word of God, but we must put on the word of God and we must put that word in action. Amen. We, it's not just reading. We got to put some works to it. I mean, we got to live what the word of God says. Amen. So it says, and put on and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Well, how am I going to get the knowledge? Here we go. Right here in the word of God with the spirit of the Lord leading you every step of the way. Pray over the word before you read it. Ask God to open your eyes, open your heart, open your mind, open your spirit. Say, God, let me see. That's how I pray and how I've prayed before. I said, Lord, help me to see through your eyes and not man's eyes because I want to know the truth of your word. Amen. And that's how you gain knowledge. Amen. And I, and when you start doing that, you'll start uh, running after running after the Lord even harder and even more. Amen. And it goes on to says, is renewed in law, in knowledge, that means the learning of Christ, the word of God, after the image of him who created him. Man's recreated himself is thus after the image of God. Once the Lord, we're created in the image of the Lord. Amen. In the image of God. Amen. We got to put on that knowledge. Amen. I think about, um, folks says, well, how will I know if this is right or this is wrong? Why right here? through the word of God. And not only that, Jesus said when he left, he, he gave us a comforter. And that comforter is the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord will activate itself. It stays activated, but it will let you know when you, you, when you do something wrong to where you can repent and get it up on the blood. Or if, if you're trying to make a decision about, the, about something, the spirit of the Lord is able to guide you. So he's gave us a comforter to help us. Amen. He'll open up the word, of, the word of the Lord to you. He'll lead. He'll guide you. Amen. So what do we do? After we're reconciled to the Lord. Amen. We put on that new man. Amen. We put on that new man. And that new man is after Christ. And we put on that knowledge that we need to know about the, the Lord. And we get it out of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I guess that's about all I had. I wanted to um, talk to you guys. That was what was on my mind. New reconciliation. How do we be reconciled? Through the works that is at the cross through Jesus Christ. And how do we start off that new reconciliation and that new life that we have? How do we start it off? It's through the word of God. Amen. And studying of the word of God and in prayer. And listen, with everything that you read, ask the spirit of the Lord to give you understanding. Amen, because you need to understand it. Once we understand it, then we have to put it on and we wear it. Just like your, I think about clothes on your back and clothes that you wear. You wear the word of God. Amen. Activate it in your life. You begin a new life living out the word of God. Amen. Well, God bless you. We, we thank you for tuning in today. Um, I hope that the rest of your day and your rest of your week is going to be blessed. And surely if you're studying the word of God and you're looking to the Lord and you're allowing him access in your life to lead and guide you, your week will be blessed. I tell you, we don't have much longer. I feel like that we're living in the last, the last days. And I know that we've probably heard that all our life. But let me tell you something. The word of God is true. He made a promise to come back. Amen. And when he comes back, we don't want him to find our work undone. Amen. If you're saved, amen, stay saved. If you're not saved, the Lord is inviting you in. Listen, the Lord is good. The Lord loves us. He's, I'm telling you, he is good. And, there, and sometimes we Christian people try to explain to folks just how good and awesome our God is. And sometimes it's hard to put it in, put in words until you experience yourself 
listen, I'm like this. Why don't you just give the give the Lord a try? Give him a try. Amen. Te I, I, I want to say test him out because we don't test him, but give him a chance in your life. Amen. To be a part of your life today. Amen. He'll change your life. He'll make you new today. Amen. He'll make you a new creature. He'll give you a new life. He'll wash your past away and you can move forward in victory today. Amen. I thank the Lord for you. Come and see us sometime here at Shiloh, Pentecostal Holiness Church at 2271 Altry Mill Road. Thank you for your time. My prayers that God will bless you and keep you is my prayer.